Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today we're going to be discussing the properties of Felix Felicis aka Liquid Luck in an effort to determine the roots of its effectiveness. First things first, what is it? Felix Felicis or Liquid Luck is first introduced to us as a potion that, in essence, enables the consumer to become successful in all of their endeavors. The potion was first created in the 16th century by a potioner by the name of Zygmunt Budge, who dubbed it the crowning achievement of his career. Mine own invention, my masterpiece, the crowning achievement of my career, bottled good fortune. Brewed correctly, the drinker of this potion will be lucky in all their endeavors, but be warned, excessive consumption is highly toxic and can cause extreme recklessness. Fans of Quidditch were quick to protest that a potion which gives the drinker good luck was hardly fair and use of my potion was banned, quite rightly, from all competitive events, except potion making tournaments. Zygmunt Budge was an accomplished wizard and potion maker that was considered to be one of the most successful of his time. He was also an eccentric, unstable, and vengeful wizard that studied at Hogwarts in his youth, but ended up leaving school at the age of 14. After this, he moved to the remote island of Hermitre in the Hebrides, where he lived in solitude, conducted experiments, and ended up writing The Book of Potions, a comprehensive textbook on the brewing of potions, basically the potion equivalent of Miranda Goshawk's Book of Spells. He included the following humble foreword to his book. I am Zygmunt Budge, and I am the greatest potion maker ever born. This is no empty boast. I invented many of the wizarding world's most powerful potions. I discovered the properties of hundreds of secret plants and creatures. I have dedicated my life to the most mysterious and misunderstood branch of magic, and these pages contain the secrets of my art, distilled for new generations of Hogwarts students. Budge died at an unknown date, but after his death, it has been said that some of his personality lingered in his book of potions, capable of acting like a guide to future readers of the book. Now, it wouldn't be inaccurate to say that Budge was not a humble man. However, if he did indeed create Felix Felicis, a spell that can render you successful at, well, anything, then I think that he is perhaps genuinely deserving of the title of the world's greatest potion maker. And on that note, next I want to take a look at how Felix Felicis actually works, that is, if it does in fact work. The idea that a mere potion could help you achieve anything seems preposterous. It contradicts the very laws of nature, it rewrites quantum states, and it fundamentally defies the principles of causality and probability. So what exactly does this potion do? To begin to answer that, I want to take a look at what luck actually is. Luck is generally defined as the occurrence or outcome of events that happens by chance or fortune, without any specific causal connection or control, a concept used to explain unexpected or fortuitous occurrences that cannot be attributed to one's actions or abilities. It's often associated with positive or favorable outcomes, such as winning the lottery, finding money on the street, or stumbling upon an opportunity. On the flip side, however, it can also refer to undesirable or unfortunate events that happen randomly, such as getting caught in bad weather or experiencing a series of misfortunes. At face value, the idea that a potion could induce luck seems to contradict the very concept of luck itself, which is defined as something that happens by chance without any causal connection or control. There are also a whole bunch of other issues with it that I'll summarize before my theory on how it actually works. Now, let me preface this by saying that I'm not a quantum physicist. I know, you're surprised. Therefore, my understanding of quantum mechanics could be a little flawed. However, here's why I don't think liquid luck, by conventional understanding, makes any sense. In quantum mechanics, the behavior of particles and systems is described by wave functions that evolve over time according to Schrodinger's equation. These wave functions represent probabilities of different outcomes, and the measurement of a quantum system collapses the wave function to a single outcome. However, the concept of liquid luck that can guarantee positive outcomes in all endeavors 
goes against the probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics. It suggests that the drinker's actions and the outcomes can be altered in a way that defies the inherent randomness and uncertainty of quantum events. Moreover, in order for liquid luck to function, it would also require a profound influence on the individual's surroundings and interactions with other objects and people, effectively rewriting the entire quantum state of the universe to ensure favorable outcomes. This kind of manipulation of quantum states on such a macroscopic level seems far beyond the scope of both scientific and magical capabilities. Liquid luck contradicts the very laws of nature and proposes a level of control over probabilities and outcomes that is currently not feasible or supported by scientific knowledge. And I know, I know, it's a magical world, but even magic has its limits. For example, magic can't create genuine love, only a strong and unhealthy obsession that resembles love. It can't put a stop to aging, it can't properly resurrect people, and it can't conjure something out of nothing. And these are just a few examples of what magic can't accomplish. These also happen to be examples of things that I would consider to be much less complicated than disrupting the very fabric of the universe. This doesn't look good for the efficacy of liquid luck. But with all of that said, liquid luck very clearly does something, as Harry, upon consuming the potion, was able to achieve an extraordinary number of things in just two or three hours. Harry did not answer for a moment, then slowly but surely, an exhilarating sense of infinite opportunity stole through him. He felt as though he could have done anything, anything at all, and getting the memory from Slughorn seemed suddenly not only possible, but positively easy. He got to his feet, smiling, brimming with confidence. In a relatively small window of time, Harry obtained the uncorrupted memory from Horace Slughorn about Horcruxes, attended Aragog's funeral, keeping his word to Hagrid, convinced Slughorn to accompany him to Hagrid's, successfully cast a non-verbal refilling charm on Slughorn's drink, even though he had not mastered non-verbal spells, bumped into Ginny, leading to a compound of events that led to Ginny breaking up with Dean Thomas, incited the breakup of Lavender Brown and Ron Weasley, and snuck back into the castle undetected, evading even Peeves. But do these accomplishments legitimize the potion, or can they be otherwise explained? I've got a theory for how liquid luck really works. The theory. The concept of Felix Felicis seems extraordinarily powerful at first glance. It purports to bestow the user with exceptional luck in all their endeavors, which could potentially rewrite quantum states and disrupt the laws of probability. Furthermore, the seemingly minor side effects of Felix Felicis, such as extreme recklessness, overconfidence, and giddiness, are entirely inconsequential when compared with its immense benefits. Because of this, one would expect the potion to be a more common staple in high-stakes scenarios like battlefields, with auras consuming it by the vileful at the maximum safe dose. I also wonder why someone like Voldemort, believing himself to be immune to death and already possessing an excessive sense of self-importance, wouldn't eagerly consume Felix Felicis in large quantities. After all, competent potion makers are certainly capable of brewing it, and the potion is well known within the wizarding community. Here's what I think. Felix Felicis does not actually affect luck in any meaningful sense. Instead, its effects can be likened to a performance-enhancing drug. By instilling the drinker with an unwavering sense of confidence and a temporary alteration in perception, the potion enables them to tap into their full potential and to make choices that lead to more favorable outcomes. By this logic, the effects of Felix Felicis would be purely psychological and no longer disruptive to the laws of quantum physics. Alternatively, I suspect that the potion could also provide the drinker with a sense of passive clairvoyance. Instead of directly altering luck or probabilities, the potion enhances a person's subconscious ability to foresee potential future outcomes and to determine the most favorable path for achieving their goals, an ability that could easily be mistaken as mere luck by others. And if this were the case, the caution to moderate the use of Felix Felicis stems from the risk of becoming overly reliant on the sensations and effects it provides. By relying too heavily on the potion's guidance, it's possible that someone may lose their own judgment, intuition, and personal agency. But whichever theory you subscribe to, I believe that Felix Felicis ultimately functions as a potent psychological aid rather than a true luck-altering substance. 
What we also have to remember is that Liquid Lux creator, Zygmunt Budge, came across as a bit of an egomaniac, and I suspect that Budge would have done anything to establish himself as an influential and a groundbreaking figure in potion making that was able to leave a lasting impression on the wizarding world. Budge never explained how Liquid Luck worked, but I think that the way he marketed his potion was deceitful. Rather than explaining that the potion was a psychological aid, I think he hoped that it would come across as something powerful enough to disrupt the laws of nature. The pursuit of fame and legacy often drives individuals to seek recognition and admiration from others, desiring to be remembered and revered for their contributions. Remember Lockhart? By presenting himself as a pioneer who bends the rules of nature, he sought to leave a lasting impact on the wizarding world and ensure his name would be remembered in the annals of history. He still made a powerful potion, but I don't think Liquid Luck is exactly what it's been made out to be. What do you think? Is Liquid Luck a magical potion capable of disrupting the very laws of quantum physics, or is it a potent psychological aid that can induce a sense of passive clairvoyance? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this discussion, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.